Hey guys, so this is going to be a short video just to introduce section 12.2. Um, I just want to kind of talk through this idea of called transformations. I understand in chemistry or physics, I think it was chemistry, um, you guys have talked about transformations before, so a little bit of cross-curricular action happening here for our e-learning situation. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is, remember how when we're doing linear regression stuff, um, the scatter plot has to look linear? Obviously, that's why it's titled linear. When you make your scatter plot, it should look kind of straight. What happens if your scatter plot is not straight? Do we just say we can't do it and move on with our lives and go back to watching Netflix? Um, actually, we can be statisticians and we can do something called transforming it. So did you know that when you go to a fishing tournament, um, you guys learn so much in stats. Okay, let me just take a minute. Okay, let me just rant for a second. But I learned so much cool stuff about the world just by doing stats. Okay, who knew there was even a thing called a fishing tournament? Okay, just kidding. I knew there was a tournament. All right, I'm bored. I need to move on. Um, and so when they have a fishing tournament, and they measure the fish by their length instead of their weight. Um, and because I guess it makes sense when you weigh a fish that's like flopping around, usually it's pretty difficult to get an accurate weight on that. So they measure it by length and then they throw it back in the water because they don't want to kill the fish, even though that's probably scary and hurts the fish a little bit. I'm starting to feel a little bit emotional. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, anyways, what we have here is we have a bunch of lengths of fish and we have their weights. And what we've done is we've graphed their scatter plot. Like you could type the state in your calculator if you want to, or you just look at the scatter plot here. Um, and we have what appears to be a curved pattern. Okay, so I wonder why it's not curved. Why do you think? Why do we think graphing weight versus length, length, weight, remember we always do Y versus X, so weight versus length. Why is it not a straight line? Why is it curved? How about this connection? Weight is considered a 3D measurement and length is considered a single dimensional measurement. And so I could kind of look at this as maybe it's part of a cubic graph. And I'm saying cubic because of the three dimension versus the one dimension. Potentially, if you know what a cubic graph looks like, this is part of like the positive part of a cubic graph. Anyway, so how can we transform the data so that we can produce a graph which is in fact linear? So remember, we can't do like our regression right up. We can't analyze this data using linear regression if it's not linear. So I have to figure out a way to graph this data so that it looks straight. Okay, so maybe what I should do is graph weight. versus the cube of the length. Maybe I could take all of these lengths, which is in the t-charts here, take all of those and cube them so that my x-axis would actually be length cubed. I wonder what that would look like or if that would maybe straighten out my data. So there is a way that we can manipulate our data so that it looks linear so that we can use all of our linear knowledge and testing and interval constructing in order to answer some questions and analyze this data appropriately. There's another way, similarly but differently, maybe we can graph the cube root of all the weight versus length. So like cube root all of the weights. Maybe we could take all of these values that are the weights down here and cube root them so that they would all be in like singular dimension-ish type of language, if you will. Um, something cool is that you can actually go to the book, page 769, and see what happens when you actually do that. And what I did here is I actually took a screenshot of our textbook from this page. Where am I? Page 769. Remember, your textbook's on Schoology, people. So you guys can uh, look stuff up and follow along here. But let me zoom in. So look, this is from that page that I just highlighted. Um, here we have the cube of the length over the weight. And look how straight this thing is. All I did is I changed all the way that I measured the length, and I made almost a perfectly straight line. It's the same exact data. I just measured the length instead of in centimeters. I did centimeters cubed. Straight line. Now maybe I can apply some linear regression stuff. Here's another example. The cube root of the weight. The regular length versus the cube root of the weight. Look how straight this thing is. 
I could use either of those options and it's called transforming the data so that you can make it look like a straight line so that we can then proceed with our testing and our, you know, whatever it is we're trying to do. So in this case, what I want to say, you guys, is pay really, really close attention to the way that the axes are labeled, okay? Because it might not just be a straight up length versus weight. It might be cube root of weight. So how's that going to impact or affect our data? Um, here I have... Um, Let's see, a couple different transformations here. Again, read really carefully, but this is the transformation, the regression output of the cube of all the length. This is the output of the cube root of the weight. And we have two different regression lines that we could analyze here. So write the equation um, of the LSRL for each transformation and define any variables you use. So, okay, X and Y, oops, X is still length. We measured all the fish in centimeters. Y is weight. Measured all the fish in, what is it, grams? Yeah. Okay, anyway, so transformation one, what I did is I had a Y hat, and I cubed all of the weight, right? And that was, I'm doing this one, transformation one first. Here's my Y intercept, and here's my slope. So my Y intercept was 4.066. Um, the slope was 0 0.01468x cubed. So something very important. Remember how we cubed the um, lengths? And so that means that in your formula, in your regression, in your like y equals mx plus b line that you're writing, you have to have the variable cubed because that is exactly how we did the transformation. We have length cubed. So therefore I'm cubing all of my X values. Remember X is just length and Y is just weight straight up. We're not transforming what the variables mean, but in the equation, you have to make sure to cube the X because that is what we did in order to straighten out that line. And that's how we came up with this Y equals MX plus B. So I'm going to do the same thing for transformation two. I still have a Y hat. Oh, actually it wasn't Y hat. Didn't I cube root all of the Y's? So that means that I need to um, cube root the y in my equation. I'm still going to put my little hat here because it's still going to be a predicted cube root of y. But what was that slope and y-intercept? Here was the y-intercept, here was the slope. So um, negative 0.02204 plus 0 0.002868 regular x okay and so again what we're doing here is I transformed my data I took the cube root of all the y's and so therefore what I needed to do is cube root the y in my formula so those are my two different transformations those are my two um, different line LSRLs and so in this case, both of those were really straight. Remember, go back up to the textbook. When I straightened all of those out by either cubing the length or cube rooting the weight, that needs to be reflected in your equation of the LSRL. Okay, so that is why we have a little bit of a slightly different equation here. We have an X cubed for the first transformation, and that is just because we cubed all of the X's. And then our second transformation, we cube rooted all the y's. And so that's why instead of y, I'm writing cube root of y. And I still have a hat over it because it's still a prediction. It's still the best fit line. Even though those dots were really close to it, we're not going to predict 100% accurately every single time. So it says, suppose a contestant in the fishing tournament catches a rockfish that is 36 centimeters long. Use the model to predict the fish's weight. So what we can do is we can take this 36 and we can plug it into this X and predict the weight. And we can also plug it into this X and predict the weight. So I'm going to kind of write out the first one here. So here's what that work looks like just for the first transformation. And so I'm going to use both of them. But this first equation here, what I did is I plugged the 36 in for X. But just make sure you cube it because we cubed all of the X values in order to perform that transformation to have a straight line so that I could actually use this LSRL equation to make a prediction. And that means that this fish is going to weigh 703.9 grams. I want to do the same thing for transformation two, but I'm going to write that one out. So transformation two, I had a cube root of y 
um, and that is negative 0 0.02204 plus 0 0.02286. And the x is 36. Remember, it's regular x that I'm plugging in, but I cube rooted the y. So it's going to take a little tiny bit of algebra skills um, to solve this. So I have cube root of y hat equals, um, what does that equal? 8.87. So how do I get y hat all by itself? I need to cube both sides. I'm just trying to figure out what y hat is, you guys. So we're doing a little bit of algebra. So that means that y hat is 697.864 grams. Look how close both of my answers ended up being. Both of those transformations are pretty accurate. You could see that those lines were really, really straight, very strongly, positively, linearly correlated. Um, and when I made a prediction based on that rockfish that was 36 centimeters long, I came really close to the number of grams. Um, there's not much variation between those two, okay? And so that's the only thing that I wanted to kind of point out here. Let's talk one more um, bullet point here is the value of S. So just to reiterate, we still have this value of S down here. So here's this S and here's this one. Um, we just need to be really careful when we're writing our interpretation. So I paused and I wrote this out. Remember that that S is the average prediction error. Um, and so the way that we write that interpretation, since we have two different linear transformations, we have two different average errors. But again, you just have to be pay really close attention to the units. Um, and so for the transformation one, this, remember that was the cube of the length by the width. So the average error when predicted, predicting the weight, we're predicting like the regular normal weight up here in transformation one. It's not cubed or cube root or anything. So regular weight based off length to the third, that's what we're basing our prediction off of. So that needs to be length to the third. So I'm going to highlight that. That's really important. Is about 18.841 grams. And the grams is the weight. Just the normal straight up weight in grams. Okay, for transformation two, we have a different S and we also have different variables here that we use. So it's still the average prediction prediction error, the average error when predicting. In this case, we predicted the cube root of weight. The Y hat had a cube root around it, so it's the cube root of the weight. That needs to be um, the same units that we use in our transformation, so be careful about that. Based off regular length, yes, regular length is up here in this transformation is about 0.124, it's that S number from the box right here, um, grams to the one third. So be careful about your units there. We did take grams and we took them all to the one third. So this is how you do a transformation, you guys. This is really cumulative from the first section that we did where we were like writing interpretations and making sure our lines were strongly correlated and positive and linear and or negative and looking at residual plots and all that kind of stuff but just keep in mind that now what we're doing is what if it's not linear that doesn't mean we can't do it that means we can um, transform the data so that it does look linear we just have to be really careful that we are always mentioning the way that we transform the data so cube root of weight length to the third things like that your units are going to be changing didn't even really mention these residual plots but the residual plot also pay close attention to the axes. So these are the residuals based on length cubed. And these are the residuals based on regular length for the other transformation, which in this case was cube root of weight. Both of these have a consistent random scatter. I would say that this one maybe is a little sketchy with the equal variance condition. It starts out with really small um, errors, but then gets a little bit bigger. Um, same maybe kind of thing here. It appears as though we have the biggest residuals here in the middle. I don't know if I would even say that, but somewhat of a consistent random scatter. Remember, no obvious curve or pattern. So I didn't mention those before, but these are the residual plots that go with these two transformations. Those are things that we need to check just to make sure it's appropriate to proceed with a linear regression. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully, see you later. Goodbye.